Hey everyone, I am Dana Pickley. I'm the editor of News Is Out, a queer media collaborative and your moderator for this special Wilds panel at the Outfronts presented by IMDB with a special thank you to Prime Video for making this talk possible. And please give a big virtual welcome to Mia Healy, Erina James and Miles Gutierrez Riley. Woo! So great to have you. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so such a pleasure. Love the Wilds. Uh, binged all of season two when I knew I was uh, going to get to talk to you. It came out right about the same time. Um, let's start out early in the season. So Shelby and Tony are, are solid. I mean, it's been a whole, what, 15 days. Uh, mm -hmm. Since they got together, right? Very typical. Uh, <laughs> they actually have, they actually have a coming out of sorts to the group, and then the group takes it really well. How does this reaction affect them both? I think um, I think it's it was so important that that was the reaction for for Shelby because you know she spent her entire life um, in fear of how people would react to that news or live in fear of what would happen to her and how her life would change if she um, was her true and honest self. So I think this was um, probably very, you know, difficult to kind of understand, but also felt really right for her. And, you know, she's very happy on this island. So I think it was just bliss, heaven, heaven, heaven for her. Mm -hmm. I know it was quite like, especially Martha's reaction it was really affirming. Yeah. I think for our feelings that we, that, that Shelby and Tony had before coming out with everybody, I feel like that kind of like solidified that they're good with it, we're good with it. Oh, great. This, we've got like a good thing mm -hmm. going. I think mm -hmm. especially for Martha, for me, it's like, yeah. Give me the big, I mean, take it approval. could have, could have been super awkward, but it wasn't. It was like, <laughs> it was like yeah, yeah, we already know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you already had a, you already had a portmanteau. <laughs> 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 we already have Shoni, so uh, love it, love it. So, Mia, you know, and let's go back to what you're saying here. Shelby's finally getting to be this person that she's always wanted to be on the on the island, mm -hmm. and we see that she makes a decision that potentially thwarts any chance of rescue mm -hmm. out of fear of losing that happiness. Yeah. What does Shelby think awaits her back home, and how much of it mm -hmm. is just like her worst fears? Do you think versus reality? I think her worst fears are her reality. And I think that's what's really sad. And that's something that she didn't have to sort of imagine, you know, that wasn't something that she was in fear of because of something she had yeah, made up in her head that was made quite clear to her, especially by her father, you know, how she, how um, her parents would feel um, about that news. So um, she does not want to go home. She does not want to go home. That is like a very toxic environment for her. And I think she's afraid of that. She's afraid of losing everything that she's ever known of her, of her old life, her life back at home. That's, um, you know, and it's, it's devastating when you, when your parents love for you is conditional. Cause I think we all hope mm -hmm. and expect our, our parents love to be unconditional. And I think as a child, especially that's something that you need to hold on to, to feel safe. And especially, you know, when you're that age, there's so much happening around you and to not have condition, uh, unconditional love from your parents, it's, it's scary. It's um, to not have that support at such a young age. It's, it's devastating. I'm sure you've probably heard from fans who identify with Shelby's story. Yeah. Yeah. That have been in the exact same situation. I mean, that must've mm -hmm. been as, as a person, as an artist getting that, that feedback from fans must be really intense. Very intense, but also um, beautiful. And I don't mean that, and I mean that in a really positive way. Um, I feel really lucky um, and honored to be able to tell this story through this character and, and, and kind of have be able to have these open conversations with people and see um, people in the fandom sort of be able to talk to each other and relate to each other and, and, and find it, that community. Um, and I think that's what's so amazing about the queer community is, is that um, support system, um, especially for people who don't have that back at home. You know, people like Shelby and, you know, those people, yeah, definitely do exist. They're out there. It's very common, which is, you know, again, devastating. But um, it's, been, it's been an honour to be able to see um, people who relate to Shelby find community from this show. It's been an honour. That is one of my favourite things. Like even... Um 
like the small glimpse of it that I get like going into my DMs and then seeing like the group chats yeah. that have come from yes. like, not even just the individual messages, but like mm-hmm. getting added to like fandom group chats where like everybody, yeah, is like finding their community through loving this show and, and identifying in it in whatever way that is like everything. It's the coolest. Totally. I'm so glad you get to experience that. You have a great fandom. The Wilds is a really, really exciting and fun fandom and they love and appreciate this show so much. So mm. I get to see them talking about it and talking about all your characters and um, yeah. exciting new characters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Miles, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw it to you. Um, okay. Instantly lovable as Ivan love like the second you come on screen I'm like yes that's that's it right there um he's openly queer he's very clear about what he wants and and how he wants to be seen and respected in this world why do you think that Ivan has become such a fan favorite of this new season um well first off I think like I owe a lot to Shoni just being this like incredible foundation in which as we were saying, these queer women, queer people across the states, across the world can like resonate and find representation that feels authentic and full bodied. Um, I've been stepping into that world is like, uh, it's it's a nice feeling to be welcomed by the queer community that appreciates the show so much. Um, I also think I've been represents something that's pretty important on the island in terms of, you know, when you're being presented eight men, um, on this deserted island, very Lord of the Flies, right? Very masculine, inten- intentionally so. Um, Ivan, and it, it, similar to a lot of the boys as we end up discovering, but I think Ivan pretty immediately comes across as someone who is not someone who would find themselves in that situation, uh, you know, is feminine, is uh, a bit delicate, um, uh, and that sort of uh, juxtaposition, I think, that between the character and his environment are pretty instantly um, comical and realistic. And um, mm-hmm. I think it's a good access point for the audience. Mm. Thank you. I love watching, <laughs> I've been walking through his school and getting like fist bumps and like, and like high fives from fellow students at a certain point in the show. And just like seeing how like respected and loved and just who he is in his life um, is, is so great to see. Um, especially for young queer men um, on television. So uh, that made me very, very happy. Yeah, um, yeah, it is nice to see Evan being uh, praised in the hallways. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that, we're gonna, we're gonna take a second. We're gonna throw to a very, uh, very good clip of Ivan and um, something that he did that may have upset his boyfriend a little bit uh, as we see in a flashback. Um, when Ivan is being interrogated. Ivan. God, it looks even hotter on your phone. You know what, if this is what retina display is serving, I need to upgrade. Why did you post that? I thought that was like a just for us thing. (laughs) You're like legitimately mad? Not mad, just not like a super public person like you. It's embarrassing. Embarrassing? We look like an Italian Vogue spread. Oh. Okay, hey, 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 hey. Can I very quickly say my piece? Insta is like wall to wall with pics of white couples doing white couple things. And their PDAs outnumber ours like a zillion to one. I don't know, I, things like this. I, it just needs to be out there, you know? Mm-hmm becoming a normal thing, making us safer, offering hope. I mean, (laughs) right now, there's some scared little boy hiding in his room, logged into his alt, scrolling for something to make him feel okay. And this video of two unapologetic men of melanin tangled up in the duvet that I refuse to cover because it's too fucking hard to put on. This video is exactly what he needs to find. (gasps) Erina, I wanted to, to talk to you about how Tony's relationship with Shelby it brings out this new gentler, softer side mm. of her. I mean, even Martha comments on it. What yeah. is it about Shelby and their connection that really allows Tony to let her guard down? Yeah. I don't know. It's really one of my favorite things is, you know, all of the um, 
all of what Shelby is that would have like arced her or, you know, pissed Tony off in the beginning, watching her like flip that and, you know, love her for those things is so beautiful. But it's, I don't know. I mean, as she says, she's like, I have a real faith in her and I trust her and I'm not scared. And I think previously and, and, you know, the love that she thought that she had in some people, there was that, um, that fear and, and the way that she releases um, to Shelby. And I don't know what it is about Shelby that makes her do that, but like, she just totally melts and it's, it is so beautiful. And I think, um, I mean, maybe her circumstance being the thing that is, uh, you know, what is to be feared that she doesn't have to find that. And, in Shelby. I, I think I like that in the beginning, she sort of comes in as uh, Tony goes to Shelby. She's like, I've got a lot to teach you here. You know, like I, I'm, I've got to figure it out. I've, I've got it set. And then flipping that and realizing, Oh no, like this girl, this girl's got it sort of this, and even, you know, even though we know in Shelby's own world, that that might not be the case. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a home that she finds in her and Martha. And that's really beautiful. Mia, if you want to jump in on that too, feel feel free. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I just think I think that Tony and Shelby work so well because they are parts the like the parts of themselves that they've like. I mean, I don't want to speak on behalf of Tony, but I feel like go for it. <laughs> I feel like absolutely go for it. <laughs> It's like that, that sort of like opposites attract thing. And we each, mm. those, these two characters give each other things that they were lacking in their life before, you know, like, you know, Tony gives Shelby this, this sort of like self-assurance in, in who she is, this sort of pride. I think that Sh Shelby's never had before. Um, and yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what Shelby does, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like also, I feel like just like, how they like came to be like their story, their journey um, yeah. into this relationship. Like, I think no matter how different people are, um, if that happens to you in the world, like that's like, I don't know, that's just such a amazing love story. Like you're going to have to fall in love with them. I, I know. I'm so, uh, <laughs> I, I would. But like, also like, I think the thing is, is, you know, there's that scene in episode one where like the perspective changes um, Tony's perspective changes on Shelby from all what she thought to be. And I think that change of perspective, just like what Mia's saying, like it's, um, yeah, how do you not fall head over heels when you've seen they're good, they're bad, and they're ugly and you love all of it? Like I think exactly. that's what it is about them. Yeah. Yes, that journey. Mm. Mm hmm mm hmm well, and through this experience, they really are giving each other this gift. I mean, Shelby is giving Tony this opportunity to just find somewhere soft to land mm. for, you know, one of the first times there in her is. life. And <laughs> to Tony is giving Shelby an opportunity to just like be her full authentic self for the first time yes. in her life. You got it. Uh, that's, that's it. I know. That's, that's exactly, exactly what it is. He's attending the wild <laughs> miles. <laughs> Writing this down. <laughs> Take me off the panel. <laughs> okay, so we're, we, we're, we're laughing, but we're going to see a little bit of why Shelby and Tony make such a dynamic duo in this clip from season two of The Wilds. The guilt of it all. What are we supposed to do with that? your friend God about it. Actually, I haven't been doing a whole lot of that lately. Brain. What do you think he'd say? To be grateful for the good? Is there to help us about the rest? Hey, fucking man. Whew, love that one. What's the clip? So that clip is when you guys are lying in the um, in the leaves and you're holding hands oh, and like oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, all right, fans, fans. This is a big part of the of the out friends, and I obviously fans have been so taken by Shoni, but I want to know what it's like for all of you. 
um, to see like the fan art and the love and support on social media. I mean, what is this? Just open up your Twitter or your Instagram every day and see just like this outpouring of creativity and excitement from fans. I mean, it's insane. And we would have never in a million years imagined that that would be the case or that people would feel as connected as they do. Or like every time I see, you know, fan art or I actually think I saw on, oh my God, what is this video game? Minecraft. Someone yeah. made an entire Minecraft world and it zoomed all the way out and it was Tony oh and Shelby God. kissing. Oh my God. I was like, the, it was oh insane. God. I was like, the hours clever. that you have taken to build oh. and mine. It's so yeah. clever. Anyway, um, I just think about like, yeah, the time and the energy and the love that people put into that and how... Um, I don't know. I was thinking about this earlier and I hope I can, um, articulate this well. Obviously, like, you know, we receive so much love from people that they, um, like feel seen in this show and that means the world, but I don't know if like people actually understand what, how that feels for us on the other side of that and how like affirming and validating what we're doing mm. is when we see that and, you know, the time and the energy and the creativity put into it. Like, I just think about, the hours and so many people spending time on that. It's just such a, yeah. Yeah. It's, it really touches me. You'd think that like, you know, now that we've done a season two, it's like, oh yeah, you know, used to it. Rah, rah, rah. No, it's like, not at all. It's still so like overwhelming in the most positive way. And Erin, you're so right about it being yeah affirming of, of what we're doing. It feels great. And it, just does that time and effort just does not go unnoticed and mm. um and never does and never will um and also like I still to this day every time I see a like edit or something of like me and Erina I'm sending that to Erina like that's going <laughs> so right now I'm like, <laughs> we're always I'm like oh my god dude this is so cute like we're really <laughs> we really yeah. are always yeah it's never yeah Oh my oh, gosh, I love it. And I'm, I know fans love knowing that. So thank you for, for saying that. That's that's excellent. Miles, yeah. like, is this the first time you've been in a kind of this position to get this sort of like fan love or is this uh, old hat for you? No, it's not old hat for me. <laughs> it's <laughs> brand new. Um, yeah, I mean, like when I got the audition for season one and I started like looking up more and more about the show, I was like, oh my goodness. Like it just <laughs> came out and already so many people have this like crazy attachment to it. And obviously that's like establishes a level of pressure as you're entering this show, especially one that's like so praised for being female led, like you have to give props where props are due. Um, but like, yeah, it's it's been, it's been overwhelming and nice to have a fan base that's so, I mean, you'd rather have a passionate and fervent fan base that's like willing to engage in dialogue about the show than people who are like, yeah, we'll take whatever. <laughs> 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 like they should like you know engage with it in um in an active way it's nice I think it's nice so I want to stay on you Miles because something that really stuck with me through this this season was Ivan's episode and just the kind of emotional kind of tumult and growth that he goes through through this experience and and his willingness to approach Seth um, mm -hmm. really just kind of like was like this a really big dramatic thing for me watching this season. Why do you think Ivan extends this olive branch of sorts? Yeah, such a big moment, I think, in the character's arc is when he makes the choice to make the candle for Seth and Roth. Um, I think it speaks a lot to Ivan basically figuring out that living in the black and white, living in these extremes has only... Um, I mean, there's there's good intentions in, in why he was living that way, but obviously through the um, events that occur on the island and the reflection that he undergoes, he realizes that there is a lot of gray area um, when it comes to compassion and understanding and um, empathy for others. And when we're dealing with something as tricky as what Seth does, I think Ivan is looking within himself to parse out the way he feels about him on a personal level and really dig into the deepest, deepest bone of the life and death circumstances of what they're actually living through. Um, and in that moment, 
he extends grace to Seth and ultimately I think is settling something that's been sort of uh, this sort of loose wire that's lived within Ivan for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that action speaks a lot to what's going on within him. And it's, I mean, it is for Seth and Roth, but honestly, I think ultimately it was for himself to prove that he could do something like that. To be tender. To be tender. Oh, to be tender. I love that part of your story, Miles. I Every know. Time. It just, it's tender. I love that. It's so That's good writing. That's good writing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> let's go, let's go from that heart-wrenching moment to another heart-wrenching moment. Uh, Mia, the scene after Shelby approaches Tony on the rocks, devastating. Thank you uh, for that. Oh. Uh, Tony doesn't <laughs> say a word. Yeah. <laughs> but Shelby speaks, Shelby speaks for them both. And it's like, the next time we see her, she's so broken. She's so devastated. She cuts all of her hair off. Talk, mm -hmm. talk to us about filming those scenes and what Shelby is going through at the, at like I think we're at what three quarters of the way through here. What what she's yeah. dealing with? Um, I feel like Shelby can be her own demise. I think she was so afraid of losing Tony that she did everything in her power. So she she did everything in her power to prevent losing Tony, and in doing that, she put Tony at risk. And the one thing about Shelby is the ways in which she carries guilt and shame come out of her in these very toxic um, ways. She doesn't have a lot of, um, she doesn't have very high self-esteem, Shelby. And it makes me sad, but she, yeah. So when that happened, you know, she, from the beginning of season two, you know, she's, this is the closest to heaven she's ever felt being, being here on this Island with Tony and I've said, I've said this before that um, she feels like in her personal experience with her faith and her family, those two things that were supposed to ground her and lift her up were the things that inevitably ended up cheating her into um, sadness. And I think for Shelby, even in these moments of joy um, and in these moments of joy, she feels she's like waiting for, for it to cheat her. And so, and because she's constantly had got that little voice in her head telling her that it's all going to come crashing down on her. She tries to control everything. She tries to control her life and her, then she's just always done that from the jump. Like if I could just like get her and like shake her and like tell her to just like stop trying to control everything. Oh, anyway, but um, <laughs> she, she, yeah, she's, she's figuring herself out. She doesn't, she's not really handling things in the right way, but um, that scene, filming those scenes was, um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. It was, it was sad, you know, and also because like me and Aaron are personally, we're like, no, we're not going to be able to like be in each other's arms around the campfire, you know, like I we, know. we loved that so much in season two, being able to like lie with each other and hang out. And we had the same call times and we were there. Like, it was just like, <laughs> On a, on a private level, like that was like also something that we were really, yeah, gutted about. Um, but yeah, I've kind of forgotten what your question was. Have I answered it? No, you, you answered it wonderfully. And <laughs> okay. there's, a, there's a moment, actually, it's made me, what you're saying made me think of something that happens that Ivan actually says. And he, he says, we're just a bunch, basically, we're just a bunch of scared kids. We're a bunch mm -hmm. of children in the dark. Mm -hmm. And just thinking of like, not only are they, are you all, your characters going through these incredibly emotional experiences, but doing them in this horrifically terrifying situation, mm. which just amplifies everything possible. Um, so sorry, Ivan's voice was like ringing, yeah. in my, ringing in my ears as I was <laughs> listening to you talk. Hold on. Um, uh, Elena, Tony's relationship with Martha, probably the mm. most important connection in Tony's life. And we mm -hmm. see how that affects her relationships with other people, including potentially the ending this relationship between Shelby and Tony. Without yeah. Marta, what does Tony's life look like? I mean, especially if I'm thinking like pre-island, you know, you see it, you see it on the island in her explosive moments, uh, you know, in season one, Martha's there to let her know that I fucked up. And then in, you know, in season two, when 
yeah, Tony's feeling so unworthy. She's there to let her know that she is worthy. And so like that sort of guiding voice, I think without her, she'd be a bit of a mess. Like she would just be um, a destructive uh, mess without a real target and like someone to sort of center her and ground her. Um, which is why I think, you know, with uh, Martha's journey that she goes on in, in the uh, later episodes, obviously Tony puts so much of that blame on Shelby, but also I think that it's because she wears it too. She, she brings, she brings up those topics in her life and then sort of plants a seed in her brain. And then later that day, it like is the thing that um, destroys her and kind of comes back to Tony being that thing that, that person that guides her and grounds her. And then I feel like the one that ripped her up and out of it. And so then that plays back into that sort of unworthy self-hatred that, that she can have. So I think without Martha, that she's shame. just, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. hundred percent. So yeah, so such a beautiful friendship. And I love it. And I also love that in the second season, we kind of get to like that our sisterhood is like is back because we were kind of you know on shaky ground for a bit there in season one so it makes me so happy i'm just mm-hmm. remembering the the that moment where martha confronts tony about the relationship with shelby and yeah. and and tony is afraid to tell her because it means so much to her and i as a, as a young person, the first time I had a girlfriend, I did the exact same thing. I was so afraid to tell the closest people to me because I was so yeah. afraid of their reaction. That, like it, it, it's so that part resonates so deeply. I think with a lot of your your queer fans. Yeah, totally. I also think that like also it being Shelby and she's known through whole you know season one and previously I've been like. <laughs> and, you know, and also, and also like made her feel like shit for the friendship that she had with Shelby. And so then to turn around and yeah, that validation that, um, that Tony gets in that moment, I think it's like full circle world complete. Like it is crazy. everyone's like, yeah. It's crazy if you think about it, like Shelby and Martha having that friendship in season one and then you being like, Fuck Shelby, like rah, rah, rah. she goes with a smile into fucking muffins. Like, <laughs> and you're like, oops, like legit. Like, <laughs> that's so funny. I never thought about it like that. That is oh, awkward. That, yeah, also it's hard to tell her. Oh my days. Yeah. Embarrassing a little bit. <laughs> oh my um, Miles and Mia, both <laughs> Ivan and Shelby are very outgoing people. They're both queer but Ivan is super out and proud Shelby is terrified to think of what's going to happen if she was outed at home two very different situations but both very real for a lot of queer people Mm. what do you think Miles could teach Shelby about being Mm. true to herself I actually said in another interview Miles and I don't think I told you this but I was like I think if Shelby could form a friendship with anyone on the boys island it should be Ivan because I feel like Ivan could just teach Shelby so much. I think one of those things being, um, yeah, pride for sure. And also um, that sort of assertiveness I think Shelby needs. I think Shelby has this like um, dangerous need to be liked constantly. And I think that, you know, Miles does a really good job of playing a character who is the opposite of that. So in a way, maybe I don't want to speak out of term, but it's, uh, I, I think, I think, um, yeah, Shelby could definitely learn from him for sure. She needs she needs some like self esteem. She needs some assertive. She needs some Ivan in her life. This exactly. Yes. yes, you're right. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Like, just learning to be unapologetic, even like learning to like love yourself and learning to be unapologetic about mm-hmm. who you are are like two different things. Mm-hmm. And I think Shelby's like on her way to self acceptance. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you get there, then you gotta <laughs> let it all hang out. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I would love for them to meet. I think oh, me be. too. Season three, fingers crossed. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So I, I was gonna say, so Miles, I was gonna I, I say like, now that the girls and guys are together, who do you think Ivan would gravitate towards? You think it would be Shelby? And just I, your own, I mean, we don't, we don't know what would possibly happen in season three, but. Who knows? <laughs> I think, yeah, I do think Ivan would like take a like an interest in Shelby, especially 
bald Shelby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. I remember that. Um, I think he'd be like, who is this picture that is learning so much about themselves? Um, I would love, love for Shelby and uh, Ivan to have some interactions. And I think I was thinking about this. I feel like Ivan could learn from Tony because they are uh, so um defensive in different ways um and aggressive in different ways i mm-hmm. think they're both on these journeys of figuring out how to how to tamper down those feelings while still totally. like feeling honest about the way that they feel and um being proud about that um it's they're similar they're on similar trajectories right now so to mm-hmm. be right there would be um i think pretty interesting and also mm-hmm. fact just because like someone to bitch with you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it revolves around that and come on we have... <laughs> i'm sure you all have seen that that uh, that shoni is not the only ship that people oh, are are very they're coming to the crown <laughs> <laughs> i will say there is a little bit of that in there but i'm a little bit like <laughs> oh, oh okay. yeah you're working on it oh my god <laughs> I'm sorry, I do see a little bit of Matt and Leah uh, shipping going on. And then that's, that's... It's funny you bring that up, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Ship him. Okay. That's how you're going to have a cast as exciting and characters as interesting as all of, all of on the wise. There's going to be multiple, multiple ships. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm captain of Shoney. Uh, I promise. <laughs> Uh, um, I just have I have one one more big question for all of you, and I've had such a pleasure talking to you. You all are such delights to watch on the show, which is exciting and gut wrenching and terrifying and wonderful all at the same time. But um, if you weren't playing your own character, who would you love to have had a crack at? Mm. Oh. I'm gonna do one boys island, one girls island. I was gonna say, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Gonna do that. My boys island pick would be Henry. Mm-hmm. It's just so like dry and sarcastic, but then like feels so deeply. I love that. It's just like every time he's on screen, it's yeah, I'd love to play those scenes. And then girls island. I mean, not that I would do it well at all, but I'd love to have a crack at Shelby. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. This passion, like, oh my like so my. Yes. This needs that. We need some sort of like spin off, like special <laughs> yeah, yeah. where it's like How the many American yeah. accents can you do in one episode? <laughs> yeah. I would love, I would die. Um, Okay, well, now that you said that, I kind of want to do that as well. Like, do the do the Tony thing. Do whatever you want, Mia. I'm also thinking, yeah, maybe maybe Tony, maybe also um, Fatten just is so much mm. fun. So much fun. Um, and, yeah, I would love to play Fatten. I think Kieran, I'd like to play Kieran. He's, like, he's a very redeeming mm. character. He's quite interesting to me. I, I watch, I, you know, just reading the scripts, I'm like, this is a character that I just think is very, very interesting. Um, and there's like a lot of like room there. I, have, I still have so many questions about that guy. I yeah. want. To ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to do like my best deep voice ever, but I would also say Kieran. <laughs> From a character standpoint, he's so fascinating and well written, and he also has a lot of fun. I think, um, mm-hmm. and he's funny. He's so yeah. Funny. Um, and I also think that's so much of what like Charles brings to it so nicely. Yeah. And then my answer used to be Shelby, but I would say now <laughs> after season two, it's Martha. Ooh. It's so like, oh, oh my yes. gosh, you have to make people fall in love with you. It's, it's so much of what she's yeah. doing. It's so intimate, um, so internal. Mm. so compassionate and then just the uh, the climax mm. is so heartbreaking and action-packed and exciting mm. I, yeah I, that's yeah, a good answer martha yeah. is it's like 
a great, great. I'd love to have a crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> getting okay? silly on this panel. Okay. <laughs> We're getting a bit too comfortable. <laughs> That's not okay. 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 Well, uh, <laughs> thank you to the, the three of you. I know you are on different continents, some of you, um, different time zones. Thank you so much for making this happen. And I know your fans are going to be so excited to see this and to hear from you. Um, I am crossing my fingers and toes for a season three and more for all of you because you left us with a hell of a cliffhanger. <laughs> and uh, and me, I'm looking at you. I don't know what's going on. The camera pan. I don't know. Mm, I'm just saying. Nice. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, I hope we get to see some re resolution in a season three. Okay, uh, okay. Sorry, all wanted to share uh, anything you all wanted to share with uh, with your fans before you before you say goodbye on the upfronts today. Love you guys. Stay Love golden. You. So Keep it up. Grateful. Happy yeah. Pride. Happy, Happy Pride. Pride. Happy Pride here. Yeah. Happy Pride. Gross. Happy Pride. <laughs> That's a great place to end. Like, yay. Thank yeah. you, guys. That was really great. It was a lot of fun talking Thank you, to you, Dinah. Thank, thank you so much. That was way thank too much fun. Thank you, Upfronts. It was yes, so lovely. Thank, thank you for you having everyone. us. Thank you so much. <laughs>